Over the the borderline. All right, third restart. Welcome to Talking About Albums, episode 39. Here in the blah, 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 blah. We don't have any subscribers. Everything sucks. We're blah, 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 blah. All right. We're doing Madonna. Madonna's first album, which I don't think I've ever listened to all the way through. I've, I've probably heard every song in it, but I've never sat down. I think the only Madonna album I've ever sat down and listened to all the way through is Ray, Ray of Light. Oh, Really? That's maybe album. the worst one. In my you, you are wrong. Really? It's a fantastic <gasps> album. Oh my. We may need to talk over that sometime. Mm-hmm. Okay, your turn. Uh, let's see. When this came out, you were probably not alive. Nope. And I was in, I'm going to say third grade. 1983. Yeah. Maybe fourth grade. I wouldn't have guessed it was that. Her first album was... I would have guessed it was at least a few years earlier or something. Huh. And I thought it was awesome. I thought everything about her was awesome. She's not really like an album thing for me other than Ray of Light. I legitimately love that album. I listen to my fair share of Madonna, but it's, it mo- it's mostly when she w- went more away from pop into like her more sophisticated adult contemporary thing, like um, Live to Tell... I love La, that. Song. La Isla Bonita. Um, say goodbye. That her mall, her mall, mall walking fair type of stuff, which I've I've always enjoyed. Wonderful singer. So are we talking like a prayer? Or I'm sorry, like a virgin? Is that the first one? No, it's just called Madonna. Okay. All right, we're starting. Jason has nothing to say. There it oh, is. God. Here's Lucky Star. Oh, yeah. This is going to be the worst awesome episode. Song. I quit. <clears throat> oh, yeah. This is like the I quit the podcast episode. I just love how squ- she, she was basically a chipmunk yes. on this first album. Hi. Do, oh, you want Brett to throw the ball? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I guess maybe a question uh, f- to facilitate questions. Yes. Uh, oh, Material Girl wasn't even on this album. No, that's the that's one I was just trying to think of. I like once woke up in the middle of the night with that song like. This is Lucky Star. I always thought that was like her coming out song, basically. I thought Holiday was, yeah. and that. Looks this like is like the early '80s album. when in pop music was. You were supposed to sound like you're about twelve. So, so mm-hmm. did you know how was her first album? Receive was she a hit like right off the bat? I mean, like like major right off the bat with the first album, or was it a little bit more like Prince, or is kind of it was, well for a, that a I'm gonna have like to turn a, to Wikipedia. A little bit more of a build up. The Wikipedia. I mean, like with Lady Gaga, where she was a superstar with her f- first. I'm album. like you know I'm well, like a human her second or third hey, album. I'm like a wik- human Wikipedia that doesn't really remember much. Let's <laughs> <laughs> uh, see. Stop it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Every one of these songs has been in a commercial. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Recently. Didn't oh, so, so I guess what, what I meant to say was, here, just speak. I'm trying. I'm looking for the thing. <laughs> yeah, nobody cares what I have to say about Madonna. She had nice <laughs> boobs. Uh, so what, what, at this point in 83, I get you would have been a relatively small child. <laughs> But what? It's a babe in the woods, really. But, but do you do you remember like what 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 at least made her separated her from the herd by this point? Boobs. Because I never thought I never thought Madonna was an exceptionally good singer. I like her voice, but I don't think she's. Oh, Madonna is all marketing. She always was. I don't know who was like her producer or her management or whatever, but. I, she wasn't a terribly good singer, but then neither was Dylan, and he, he got to be yeah. huge on, on the strength of his songwriting. I don't know how much of this she actually wrote, any of it. Well, well, I think she got better when her voice dropped a bit, and it like came more to the forefront in the production. All those but cigarettes she, was all in. she does like the more like the breathier thing a little bit better, mm-hmm. like slower, like breathier type of songs. So I like her voice a lot, but... But I, she understood yeah. pop music, she understood the marketing of it, she understood how to sell... The sex and the body Show and the, the heavenly body tonight. And somehow also market to 
children like myself that just thought it was all really cool. I know. Because like, it wasn't like over she was already wearing a bustier point. by then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like as a pop music connoisseur, I really don't know that much about her as like what she contributed to the whole grand scheme of things. Obviously, I think she contributed a lot to the image and she could sing well enough. But like... I think her ability to change her image from one album to the next yeah. really kept her relevant to pop music for a long time. I'm saying she understood all of that and how to make it work, mm. how to make Just it pay. Because this album, She's a as I recall, genius. this album has nothing terribly serious on it. It's mm -hmm. all just radio friendly, radio gaga. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, like okay. Cheryl Crow's first out, or first album was that one, Tuesday Day Music Club. Yeah, mm -hmm. poppy, really quality. Yeah, production, fun summer sh songs. Schmaltzy, perhaps. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, like th th this is saccharin. Yeah. Oh yeah. In, in retrospect, but I but mean, it was like when you think of, out that way, I think. Like when you think of all the C-list female singers of the '80s who like vanished to history, this is fairly edgy if you're at least comparing it to teeny bopper female pop. Like there's crisp production. All the one uh, hit wonders that have disappeared from your memory right now. Is that what you're talking about? Right. She's one of the few who didn't go on a mall tour. And it was, but but that's what it is. Like a lot of those one hit wonders were just trying to emulate Madonna a little bit. Mm. Like she was the innovator, but she wasn't doing anything terribly new. It was just I, I remember after this album, she starts doing things a little more. Mm, Slightly edgy, and then more edgy, and then flat ass in your face. <laughs> like, yeah, like like I was talking about earlier. The, the, none of this is that overly sexualized Madonna. That comes an album or two after this. Right. This is like kids pop. Which is borderline. Borderline. Like yeah, I remember being in. Think think Mariah Carey later on. Same mm -hmm. kind of thing where it was all Here's like. My boobs. It's all like well, I meant the music part oh. where where it's all like <laughs> like I need some vape. Definitely aimed at you, Thank you. as a teen girl mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, oh, Whitney Houston. That's another good example of somebody who came up with a they, they came up with an image for her. Yeah. It wasn't her at all. You know, Madonna. It wasn't you found out later. It wasn't her at all. <laughs> but. Yeah. They cultivated a thing. I remember when they were like, you know she took uh, nude pictures and tried to get into Playboy at one point. And I was just like, looking back at it now, I was like, well, what a tame thing to do. You know, <laughs> naked in Playboy was so nothing when you look back on it. It was like, why was that a big, tawdry thing back then? And it's like... Because your pop stars were supposed to be squeaky clean. Right, right. If they oh. were girls. Well, now they dress about like you would in Playboy just in a video. I mean, you know, I'm not trying to sound like an old fogey. I'm just saying, you know, it's just like... Those young point, girls just with went, their vaginas? No, I just meant they, they, like, you know, living through it, you start, you go, yeah, why were you making such a big deal out of this? That's like, wow, I'm shocked a 21-year-old girl wants to be thought of sexually or something. Now, one of my vivid memories of the uh, College Hills Mall was <laughs> the next to Hobby Lobby. What was it before? Um, Lock, Stock, and Bagel? Uh, no, the, the department store that Hobby Lobby took over. It was one of those oh, long, long... Montgomery Ward? Yeah, Montgomery yeah. Ward. Well, next to it was like the media store. I remember like walking by there and there was like this thing hanging in the window for Madonna's bedtime story. So it would have been like 96. Like Musicland? Yeah, I don't know, but it was just this was, advertisement for. What was the other one? Where she's, she's just Land wearing like was... Sam Goody. Yeah, Sam Goody. I think. Yeah, I where, think that was it. It's just her with like or her whatever their equivalent of that was. Bleach blonde hair, wearing her teddy. Like, like <laughs> wow, that's something. <laughs> <laughs> wow, she's almost like, naked. Is this pornography? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if you were like raised religiously, it might be a thing. Oh, I've I never... just looked at it and went. Mom, what's that? And she's like, that's a hussy. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to listen to it because it's cool. <laughs> I've, never, right. I've never heard the album version of this with this weird interlude. Right? <laughs> so maybe we should talk it's about... It's like the Shep Pettibone remix. Yeah. It's like the Sheep Heebly. <laughs> oh. 
Can we talk about Borderline? Break it down for eight measures. Please. How I don't know how the hell this wasn't an Elton John song. <laughs> Which one? Borderline. It just sounds this like one? somebody wrote it for... Even it is the, a little bit like a... Even though I know that... Don't Go Breaking like, My Heart. Yeah. Like, it feels a little bit like that. Like, I, I looked it up. It's like the guy she was briefly married to, some songwriter who wrote this for her. Sean Penn? But this f***ing sounds like an Elton John song. Like that Philadelphia soul thing. Was there ever even a bass on this? There's, there's just like three different synthesizers. Yeah, it's just... It's just a synthesizer mean? bass. Yeah. Hey, you know this has this the exact the same. It has the exact same bass line as "I want a girl with a mind like a diamond who's fast." Hush now, that's thorough. my favorite song of all time. Okay, maybe not, but I like that song as much as I like this one, maybe more. I don't need seven minutes of this song. So, <laughs> holy oh. sh! In my love. Over the borderline. No, no song. Okay, with... let's talk about what is the borderline. Is it a sexual thing or is it just kind of like a? Oh, he's gonna try to kiss me. Is it just innocent like that? Because it feels like they leave it up to the interpreter. Well, now for that, I have to go back to the beginning of the lyrics to see if she says anything more specific no, than I'm that. I'm just wondering no. what you think of when you listen to it. Not. No, I thought it was more emotional, but I was eight. That's okay. That's <laughs> that's actually the question I was asking, though. I mean, just like, if you think about Madonna seriously, what she's saying to you. Yeah. You know, it's like, if you look at the lyrics, a lot of times, that oh, will change your perception. The video. But, but what it sounds like, you know. Yeah. It's like, there's a lot of songs that I've learned later. The so the lyrics were oh, a God, little bit next. different than what I was thinking they were that talking about. That does go about. on for a while. That is sorry, but what I remember from out. the video was Axel all about F. how he was not really a very good boyfriend, and she kept having to drag him out of pool halls and shit like that. And she's he's just really pushing the envelope uh, with this relationship. That's what the story, the video said. I've never heard okay. this. Okay, what are we listening? Burning to? up. Oh, I'm burning up, burning up for your love. Let me just say, uh, she of course knows this song. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. The album version of Borderline is the worst. Studio versus uh, single. Yeah, they just took the same like crappy synthesizer stuff and made it longer. Ooh. Yeah, so that overtakes uh, Abacab. Gee, when did they ever do that in 1983? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so have you ever heard the dance mix to "Miss You" by uh, the Rolling Stones? They made a dance mix to that <laughs> song. Oh my god, it goes on forever, and I'm just like, I like the Rolling Stones, and I can't stand this. Burning up for your love. Uh, oh yeah. I'm burning up. That's all there is, this whole song. Right. Wasn't this on a soundtrack, though? I'm guessing like the movie was called notes. Burning Up. No. No. Nah. I feel like it was on Shanghai Surprise. <laughs> that Sean Penn Madonna vehicle. Ew. I tried to watch that one time. Holy it crap. It seemed like a very like late 80s... Like mid mid to late eighties thing of like sleazy crime sex movies. Mm. Remember that like the, like that Alec Baldwin movie with Kim Basinger where it was just advertised as them having sex the whole time. The Getaway. Like, yeah. And it was like, wow, that looks horny. Yeah. I remember there was another one that was like that at the same time. Yeah, that, that's pretty mm. much that's pretty much an extinct genre of film. The the sex adventure, <laughs> the porn without the sex part, yeah, <laughs> like the soft, soft, soft core adventure porn, like crime porn. It's like, look, a bare shoulder. Woo! Well, that's where we are now. Because, like, I'm, I'm. I like, feel like I just said that about uh, 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 Playboy. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like you see how benign that was. Now, right? <laughs> it's like you saw a boob once in a while. Like people like, like joke about. I read it for the articles. It's just kind of like, well, you do. But then when the boob showed up, you'd look at it. I mean, you wouldn't, <laughs> but you weren't like getting overly excited about it or anything. You're just like, oh, look at that. Do women just <laughs> flip around naked in bed with a teddy bear? I, I, I guess Probably. maybe. <laughs> sure. Mm-hmm. This is extraordinary. She's burning up boring. for your love, by the way. Where she's still burning she's still up. Still burning your love. up. This song's pretty terrible. This was a dance I song. Enjoyed, yeah, it's... 
But there, there's absolutely nothing interesting All going really on in the production. All I wanted in the world was to have a girls you sleepover. You still have songs like this. And everybody just dances around like this the whole time, and, we're all, and then we all have a sleepover. You still this have song songs like this. for that. When you go to, oh, like, when you went to, like, the disco, the, what, what do they call them later on? They were the, the dance club. club. Or, yeah, the club. Here's, and, I, I know it. And they, they just, like, they just have different versions of that song. But, but what that reminded me of is, is like, uh, I um, get down, I get down for your love. You know, it's just like l- like demo eh. demos that like Sting and Prince and like the Police and Prince would do, like their home studio recordings. Like this sounds like those. Where it's, oh yeah, it's just like the the drum track. Ex- oh, like, we're like, listening like, like, to really I know it, and man, is it I know it. Yeah, <laughs> it just sounds like really polished versions of their demos. Now, is that a function of the fact that it's the 80s, or is it just bad production value on the album? I don't know. Where, where, where it's like, you can kind of tell there's a good song in there, but it... Well, don't you remember, you never really expected much demo. out of an entire album. It was just the hits. They knew which songs they purchased, which were going to be hits. They already bought them knowing what they were going to be. Now, her, it sounds like she wrote some of her songs, which made her different than a lot of performers, but... I don't remember this song at all, and... This is Ooh. even worse. She's one of the she's she is the writer of this song, and there is no further link on Wikipedia about this because <laughs> it's boring. Can I turn it off? Absolutely I forgettable. Just for yeah. a second, I think they saved a lot of money on this album by only having one guy playing an instrument. <laughs> okay, wait. She wrote. Oh, this is getting interesting. Okay, she. It's she, a Casio. She has writing. She has writing credit on Lucky Star, and Burning Up, and I know it. This 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 piece of crap. That's nice. <laughs> and I'm already two broken. More, two almost... more that you've never heard of that are later on this album. I wow. Like... Uh, this is terrible. We're only four. Oh, you're going to take gonna... my love and run. You're going to take my love and run. I know it. Well, at least this is a really, really short album. Unlo- yeah. Thank God. Wasn't <laughs> she like born in the same town as Bob Dylan or something? I, I feel like there's Italian. something like she was from Minnesota originally or something, and she tried to keep that a big secret for a long time. That sounds right. I, I thought she was, like, fresh off the boat from Italy. Or... That's what she wanted you to think. That's right? what she wanted you to think. Madonna, <laughs> Gwes, Gwes, Gwen, Stef, Gwen Stef, Ma- No, it was Ma- Madonna Maria. Mapadopolis. <laughs> it was Madonna Maria. Ma- Mazapone, uh, Mazapone. Marissa. Madonna Louise Ciccone. Oh. Oh, you're missing some names in there. Uh, by the way, she almost shares a birthday with both of us. Oh, I was thinking of Freddie Mercury. Somebody has like a super long last name with like Schnippafrippadopoulos. Mm-hmm. Is it George Michael? Is he the one with the really long oh, last yes. name? Oh, yes. Greek. Like, Greek. Yeah. Giuseppe Gibraltar. Her hometown you is listed as Rochester Hills, Michigan. <laughs> it's per- like... like <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's, like, like, it's listed like as she was Simpson. born in Bay <laughs> City, Michigan. There you go. <sighs> I used to work with a guy who would like come into work, and they were like, "Oh, you growing a beard?" It's like, "No, I shaved this morning." <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "No, seriously, I can. If I decide to grow a beard, I can have one by Friday." <laughs> <laughs> this is a horrible. This song. is awful. That's what I think of George Michael. Like, you can say all the great things about him, but one thing about him was he That's couldn't be shaved if he wanted to. But here's Holiday. Holiday! Uh, this is a great song. Holiday! It would be so nice! Holiday! Don't we all oh. just need a holiday? Oh, the beginning. Celebrate. I, can, I can never tell which song it is when, whenever the song starts. I always think it's, you got the look, the look <laughs> of love. Nice. <laughs> Don't judge your book by the cover. If you judge a look by the wow. river. Oh, I never thought of that before. Who's got the look? Damn. The look of love. Celebrate. I mean, you can do that with half of the songs of the 80s. But it's a good Celebrate. song. Yeah, the problem is, is I feel my IQ lowering as I listen <laughs> to it. It's like... You're like, going to, uh, you know... I can't remember problems. the word for things. So you would have been, <laughs> what, like 12 when this came out? I... What sure, is I don't know. What year was it? Or you know, by the time it got to Illinois, maybe you were fourteen. I don't know. 
We didn't get MTV until I was a teenager. Have a celebration. So I didn't understand what everybody was saying about like them playing the same videos over and over again. I was like, do they? <laughs> I have no idea. Oh my god, we're only 21 minutes in. This is almost over. Get up out the back. Oh yeah. This is gonna be easy to edit, at least. I don't know, maybe maybe it's the sparks talking, but like <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's the for local. Uh, you've been st- drinking the sparks and getting electrocuted by the yeah. microphone all night. I think there's a not a coincidence. Yeah, I I'm ill. Let's get the um, connection. There's at least like a solid building block here. Those last couple songs were awful, but they're still like there's promise. Lucky the, the the songs that were hits were hits for a reason. Lucky Star, Borderline, and Holiday are amazing songs. They're good. I think she, she had a vocal command at least. Mm-hmm. She and then combine no, that wait. with her use of the video, the because MTV had just come I out. I like wait. I like context. I always like to bring up the context of something of like the time of which it came context out. Context bell. And thank you. All right, that's too much bell. But if you think about it, this was the first big wake-up call to uh, record companies when they were like, you know, they've been throwing money around like idiots in the 70s. And what, and that's why there's 7 million albums that you've never heard in the 70s. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because they would just throw shit at the wall and see what sticks. And then in the 80s, they were just like, hey, we got to do something about that. And that's why they backed that CD thing and tried to get everybody to replace all their shit with CDs because they got a royalty off of that. Okay. And a big one, the record you gotta companies You've got to find us some teenage girls. And I think about this and I'm just like, her first album has a lot of hits on it. Whether you like them or not, they pushed them and hard. And each of those because, had a really good video on but it. But they, they, you only got one album to become good then. You don't get to build up an mm-hmm. audience or mm-hmm. anything anymore. Right. It was all about marketing it, selling more of that album because you've got the video <laughs> out there. You've got more and more exposure of the song. Yeah. If so they're don't... paying people to put it on the radio a lot. So you hear it a lot. If mm-hmm. you so don't it's... sell a thousand in the first week, you're doing, way the, more you're, doing, you're doing the mall tour. Why is this that could so be a thing. I want to have it. Just think of me. <sighs> You must be my lucky star. Oh, oh my god, this <laughs> smells awesome. What's that one? No, this is Think of Me. Think of Me. Bing, 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 bing. Brighter days. Bing, 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 bing. And then my brain explodes. Does every song, every pop song in the early 80s have the same bass line? Yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm, it's probably the same boom, guy, too. Boom, he had like, boom, boom, he's boom. had like a keyboard, and he was just a professional synth bass player. Yeah. No wonder everybody liked that guy from George Clinton. They always got that guy, the bass player, to be on their song. He could probably come up with a different freaking riff. <laughs> like, can you give us anything different? <laughs> Just anything. <laughs> they even have uh, they even have similar <laughs> covers. Sorry, <laughs> 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 this is like a really crappy version of Prince's um, <coughs> Lucky uh, Star. Oh. Uh, Dirty, Manic Monday. Like no, Dirty Dirty Mind album. It's like a, right. it's like a much worse version of Dirty Mind. Like, yeah, this like, song, I'm glad I can't really make out the lyrics because I don't think they're very good. Yeah, like, kind of, you know, minimal. That's the that's the lyric, honey. Think of me. Ki- kind of a minimal. You better think of me. M- minimal, kind of restrained, but also upbeat, synth-driven 80s pop. Kind of. This makes sense in my mind. Think right of now. me. <laughs> what? Well, when you're I'm doing whatever you do, just think of me. Eating cheesy biscuits. Oh, gosh. And you wake up in the morning, and you think of me. You know, uh, Aretha Franklin wrote this way better. It's called no Say a Little Prayer. way. Yeah. Yeah, this is the same sentiment and done very, very badly. How can, yeah. a, how can a 15 minute long album be this long? 
Have we found your tapestry? No, I mean... How close to tapestry ooh, is this? fake... Fake saxophone? Break for eight majors. This is a new one. <laughs> I hate it and don't hate it at the same time. It's it's like elevator music, basically. Yeah, I mildly enjoy this. So, like, it's boring as it's f- but, but I like elevator music, so it's just like, eh. This is a pretty again, good mall walking song. Again, I have to point right out rhythm. how you keep hearing little um, musical things, like the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like that comes up later in other songs that I've heard. Not yeah. necessarily Madonna, but somebody listened to this album and said, I like that sound. I'm gonna put that on something. That stuff is <laughs> that's production value. And you can hear the producer in the background going <laughs> knob twist. Oh, knob I don't twist. think anybody was smoking dope while they made this. I think it was a little more <laughs> 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 Oh, do I have anything? You see anything? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I this song is okay. not good. But it's really not <laughs> annoying. It's not like... It's really close to the other songs. It's really funny how close it is to being... It's like vaguely other. enjoyable as long as you're not really paying attention. I just mean like... Like if you started making out with least, your boyfriend two songs me, ago, this, fo- this song, song is just sounds, fine in the background. It fits the songs that are actual hits on this album. Mm-hmm. Like it sounds like this for, oh. for a couple of mistakes might have been a good... Uh, this, this could have one, been a hit, too, uh, if the lyrics were better. Oh, I lost it. Uh, I was going to say... And they didn't was... have this fake saxophone thing going on all the time. Holiday! Saxophone! Wait, what's Where's better? Where's the damn track listing? <sighs> what's better? Oh, here we go. Yeah, she wrote this one, too. <laughs> what's better? Vaca- she wrote all the bad ones. What's better, vacation or holiday? Oh, wait, no, that's not true. Ooh. She also wrote Lucky Stars. This you is must be my still lucky going. Star. Here's physical attraction. Ooh, I like it already. Yeah, this Ooh, wasn't written by her. This sounds like something from the Ghostbusters soundtrack. <laughs> so, what's better, vacation or holiday? I remember being surprised by how good I liked uh, the, the Go Go's. No one can answer my question. I- I'm thinking no. about it. Vacation versus holiday. Or- I know more of the words to holiday. Which probably means I listen to it more, and that would mean or that B-52's I like it Or B-52's Rome. <laughs> oh, definitely either one of the other ones over that. I guess when I listen to this album, the serious part of me goes, I see how Like a Virgin came about. Like I said before, this one's very... Uh, like, let's just listen to what they're playing on the radio and make exactly what they're playing on the radio. No, that's what you need to be thinking about all the time. And I feel like she got popular enough. She thought, hey, I'm going to write some songs that they'll just, you know, like I said at the beginning, everything later on has a little bit more bite and then a little bit more edgy to it. Yeah. It like says a little bit more. I'm this trying song to, is a great like, example of that. This is the watered down version but she of never, Lucky Star and Borderline. Like, it's What's it, it called? Say a Prayer? Yeah. Is that the one? Okay. Like a prayer. I remember when Like, like a, a prayer. prayer. When Like a Prayer comes out, that was the one that had the most polarizing thing. And it was still, everybody just said, yeah, but it's Madonna because I'm going to listen to it anyway. It was so polarizing. <laughs> they had a black Jesus in the video. I know. Woo-hoo. That was a statue. <laughs> you can't even have a black Jesus statue. <laughs> it's good mall walking music. This song isn't bad. I get why it wasn't a hit, but... Yeah, it's a little boring. There's no there's no hook. It's like a low rent version of Lucky Star. It's the same kind of a theme. It feels like that song, but no hook. There's nothing to grab onto. Yeah. There's nothing meaty to it. Yeah. Because I don't care what genre you're oh, talking about. La- I think this is the last song. No, you're there's gonna one like- more. <laughs> no. One more well, called the- everybody. Everybody was on the original. Oh okay. You don't want to hear At John Jellybean ben- John Jellybean Benitez's twelve inch version, which is somehow oh, short, burning up, which is somehow somehow shorter than the album version. <laughs> <laughs> Good lord, he was, what do you call it? He was he was merciful. <laughs> Even my dad liked to like a Virgin album, you know, and he doesn't care about what's on the radio. That's one thing my dad always had is he would listen to things on their own merit. He liked Guns N' Roses until he got the album, and then he was like, oh, I don't like all of this. I thought, you know, I heard Sweet Child of Mine. That's a good album song. <laughs> then I got the album, and I was like, you're crazy, Dad. This is like one of the best albums ever made. That's what happened to me <laughs> with Extreme. I heard one song and went, I'm going to buy that album. 
Oh my god, this would be awesome if you were, had a mountain of cocaine. Or if you were an eight-year-old girl at a slumber party having a dance party. What if there's just like an orgy going on right now? You could just like, it was like, like look at all this stuff happening right now with all the cocaine in the corner. (laughs) Can that be my new catchphrase? This doesn't feel like orgy music. (laughs) If you want it to be. (laughs) Can I just start saying it all the time out of context? I'll make a plaque and you can put it on your desk. (laughs) This doesn't feel like an orgy. (laughs) I, th- I think I think nine <laughs> syllables is too long for a catchphrase. Uh, but... Not orgy music. <laughs> ding ding ding! This is the How not about, orgy. Where music the orgy though. at? Where the orgy at? Where's the orgy at? Because he's from <laughs> Illinois, so you have to add a preposition at the end. <laughs> you have to say all like one thing, like 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 where the orgy at? <laughs> We've huffed too much vapo. Wow. Okay, this That's song. We're all, I think we're all done with this song. This has got to go. What's the last did one? Did you it's break before everybody. I did on something? <laughs> I broke on that Yay! song. I mean, I don't hate the album. I'm just really Yay! done with this song. It's gone on. Yeah, if you played this Yay! entire album while Chris was sitting there and not asking her any questions, That is questions, a six and a half minute version of a three minute song. Ooh, I like this. It sounds kind uh, of like talking heads. Wikipedia said that this is the reason she got a record deal, this song right here. It, was, it got so much play in New York City that... I've never heard it. It sounds like somebody... I feel like I've never heard it either, but... It sounds like somebody squirting something out of a synthesizer. (laughs) Squirt, 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 squirt. Squirt, 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 squirt. I'm going back to where I feel like I read that so that I can explain myself. For the first 20 seconds, it sounded like uh, the Tom Tom Club. Oh, now she's whispering like... Oh, I know this song. Start the ratings. Everybody. I give it a five point... Holy crap. This is totally Lady Gaga. I give it a five point two... I give it three. Don't you blast me. I give it three beef stroganoffs out of a two and a half bowls of Italian-y Madonna <laughs> pasta. <laughs> I give it two boners out of ten. <laughs> Madonna Caccioni. Young Madonna was hot. This was her debut single, 1982. Granted, I'm a flaming homosexual, but I never thought madonna was attractive at any point ever oh she was crazy even as a even as a boy of age at the time me like crazy women <laughs> i give this album used to eight and a half dancing nine-year-olds ew <laughs> there's just no way out of here <laughs> it's, it's fine that's what pop music's all about there you go you're going to love it, and then six years from now, you're going to hate it, and then ten years from now, you're going to be like, hey, why don't we ever play that anymore? <laughs> I'll say it's, it's, not the worst, it's not the worst thing we've done, not even close, so that's saying something. It's so got, is it it's a, got like, what's the over-under on Tapestry? <laughs> it's got an introspective quality to it, like a, like a Muzak kind of mall-walking thing that appeals to me. But it's mostly like a flat line. Not, but not a flat line in a way that's like desperate to keep my attention. That's what gets annoying mm. with a lot of the uh, these episodes we do where, right. where it's like, yeah, it's just one nonstop party, okay. but nothing ever changes. It's just a, yeah. this f-ing level the whole time. My criticism... Are you done? Yeah. My criticism is that whole thing where they just say the same thing over and over again. And there's hardly any lyrics. It's yeah. just... It's all chorus. <laughs> and it's like, I get it. That's dance songs. But they're not my thing. So it's kind of like, I have to step out of myself and say, is this a good dance song? Do you want to kill yourself or stab yourself in the ears when you're listening to it? No. <laughs> so I guess I give it two boners. <laughs> I'll give it one huff out of seven. Yeah, it's there. It's not my genre of music. It wasn't even when it was out. So it was just there. And Uh now I listen to it and I'm just like, the hits I actually appreciate better now, but the ones that aren't hits, I totally know why they're not. Yeah, this one's right on the edge. (laughs) It's like, there's something not right. right. It's not there. Yeah. So that's my... I'm going to stick by my original assessment. It's a... It sounds like a really, really rough draft of Prince's Dirty Mind album. And that's all we got I'm going to stick by that. 
original assist. But everybody get up and dance to the beat. I think it was beat. really, really well honed to I can't tell what she wants everybody to audience. do, though. <laughs> That's what I'm really confused about. What is she trying to do? She wants to you say? to let yourself go. Sound you like. know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> the only way you're dancing to this is just that, that sort of like... The white man's yeah, overbite? Yeah, like fast the, like enough the to be a good Houston dance song. Thing. Like, oh, yeah, that's really good. Where oh. is the video on this YouTube channel right here? Mm -hmm. Like, is there a name for that? Perfect. Just like like pivot the foot and then kind I of... I think you need to lift one head. hand in the air like Heather right. always does. <laughs> like, you put this hand up here and people feel like you're actually doing something. <laughs> the, the pivot and turn... Like that is true. Once I realized what Heather meant when she said she wanted you to come out and dance with her was just to kind of move back and forth and put your finger in the air. Right. Stand in front of her <laughs> and like, bounce up and down without moving your feet. Uh, you fine. mean dance like a white dude that has no idea how to dance. Gotcha. I can do that. I can almost find the beat. <laughs> so somebody in 1983 heard this in New York City and was like, this is some hot <laughs> No, they saw her boobs. <laughs> it was her boobs. Damn! You, she's willing to wear something very revealing and sing in front of people. Hey, get my limo. I'm from New York. I want to meet at the Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that really peters out. It's another six minute song. My God. Well, this is going to easily be the shortest episode of this. Um, all right. Did everyone say what they wanted to say? I think I did. I remember liking Madonna. Goodbye, folks. And for the love of God, somebody subscribe. Thank I, you for I, listening. I barely mustered up the energy to get through this episode. So Brett needs another subscriber or he's going to die. <laughs> God said we need more subscribers. <laughs> God's going to kill me if we don't get more subscribers. <laughs> yeah. I know. Brighter days. Brighter days. And then my brain explodes. <laughs> <laughs>